Hello guys, I'm an artist Yaroslav Ternovsky and today we are going to paint this nice uh, still life. I've got it over there. I'm going to explain you how to work on composition, on coloring, how to get the proper values, hues and saturation in order to get your painting as realistic as possible. Let's get started. We're going to paint a beautiful a painting of the still life which consists of uh, a cup of tea and a candy in a glittering wrapping over there. It's well lit by an artificial light, very strong and warm light. I'm going to use a canvas which is not blank as you might see, it's a canvas which uh, left from the previous tutorials, from art classes. I just got rid of the extra uh, layer of the paint and now I'm going to reuse it. Well, and just uh, those colors which we already have here, I'm going to use uh, for our purposes. We, we might think how to orient the canvas because as you see we've got this uh, red and this gray area on the right. Uh, so I encourage you to use your old canvases, even old paintings. You can repaint them, you can uh, redesign them and get very interesting results. So it's just rotating it to see um, how to place my future composition. And I, I stick, I'm going to stick to this orientation. I just want to have more warm colors uh, at the top and colder colors here at the bottom of the, of the painting. Well, and as you can see, let's just get a bit closer to the, to the still life itself. As you can see, the still life has those cold colors of the uh, curtain or this uh, napkin tissue and very nice candy, glittering candy and a cup, porcelain cap filled with uh, orange-brown tea. Uh, I want to convey those glittering effects. I want to convey the particular light in order to make the viewer I feel like um, hungry or thirsty in order to uh, produce the feeling that just in a moment you can... So we're gonna, we're gonna start. Well first I'm going to compose my painting. So I usually use the ultramarine for that purpose because the ultramarine is the easiest paint to, to correct, to get rid. Therefore I'm going to use it. And just I just put the uh, core composition that I think now about the orientation and just paying attention not to put something important or of secondary importance to the center of the canvas. And also I can work on the uh, composition freely because I can move some things of the still life without any harm and nobody will judge me because nobody is going to compare the real still life to those objects I'm going to depict here. So then with those slight lines I just try to capture the overall size of all the objects on the canvas of, of, of the still life here. Right and there their linear perspective and the size of it. I pay attention to the distances between objects and the edges of the canvas like that. Checking it. Here we've got duplicated uh, distances. Three, three very same areas and maybe the fourth almost there. So I need to to change it slightly. Maybe I'll put the cup of tea closer to the center. Here it is, but this this plate isn't as important as the cup, so we can just show you that the cup has a different distances to the edge of the canvas, and that's that's fine, that's enough for me, and I can continue working on it. Well, we've got those nice turquoise. Uh, color of the tablecloth, so we can make it. Uh, we can make it using 
for example, uh, green tallow, just let's have it, and some blue tallow. We'll just add some a little bit of cadmium yellow. We've got this kind of turquoise thing, and first I'm going to get rid of of let's say background colors not of all of them just in some particular areas which are closer to the main objects here and I try to get as pure color as I can so I don't mix a lot of paints into one compound it's enough to to use two maximum three three colors to get the appropriate Hue. So here we've got just I constructed the color of the tablecloth which is well lit but also we've got the tablecloth which is there behind the cup behind the plate and it's much colder so let's do it colder I just use more phthalo blue and phthalo green in the single mixture and less of cadmium yellow here some areas behind the cup, behind the plate. Now it's cold, colder, let's say, colder than the color on the foreground. Here we are. We've got some primary color in here. And let's continue with the cup. Since I've got cold colors on my brush, I will use ultramarine plus uh, titanium white to get this cup painted and also I must pay attention not only to the uh, to the warmth of the color but also to their to the value to the light so-called light so as you see now we've got a cup of cup of tea which is lighter than the background but in reality I've got this those prompts and I see that the background is lighter than the cup so it's better to fix it now so I, I'll use more tremorine plus burnt umber to neutralize its bluish hue and we've got some kind of red uh, some kind of gray just want to make it darker even darker and don't be afraid of making even the white porcelain cap darker because uh, Later on, you need to, to show that it's glittering color, uh, glittering wrapping, candy wrapping, and how can, you, how can you do it if you've got everything well lit and very light? So in contrast, only in contrast you'll be able to show the lightness. And again, then we'll continue with the cup itself, and I use uh, yellow ochre, titanium white, plus some scarlet to, to get those pinkish hue and look, just paint it boldly. Don't be afraid of those dark hues we, ha we have here. And basically it looks much lighter, those colors look much lighter now than on the palette because self it's a kind of neutral gray and on the canvas we've got very powerful uh, red hues on the background which enhance the colors of the cup for now and also we'll add some extra to the plate uh, well I, I, I don't pay too much attention to the accuracy of the brush strokes as for now as you see but I pay an attention to the overall composition and I try not to ruin it. It's very important since we've got the, got it done or at least sketched uh, on our canvas. So just don't ruin the composition, but don't be too accurate. I mean, don't pay any attention to those edges. They might be loose, they might be blurred, and that's okay. Well. Here we are, that's it. No, no contrast, as you see, no contrast for now, no, no powerful colors, but we are 
moving towards it. And of course, let's show the the T. Just don't use or use little uh, white color and primarily ochre and scarlet and burnt umber. Here I want to get a kind of effect. I don't need I don't need the the white color here at all because white white paint you see I just need to get rid of it now because I overused perhaps the white color left on my on my brush and yeah it decreases the saturation of the mixture so I don't need it much. Then I can also use some gray hues on the background using ultramarine and burnt umber here. Just, just neutral, neutral tones. Again, ultramarine. We've got nice scarlet in premature. Got nice scarlet in prematura, and that's also helpful. Here we are. Here we are. So we've got the basic coloring, and also uh, the composition is set. You see, my drawing isn't very accurate, but I promise you that very soon we'll get much accurate uh, drawing and composition. So let's proceed, for example, with candy wrapping. Just want to strengthen the value somewhere here and there. I just put it again very freely, loosely and not very accurately, just in order to show that it has some volume. Yep, then the falling shadows are very important here and I make them of ultramarine and burnt umber in order not to and maybe a bit of green tallow. Yes, here we are. Then let's get falling shadows from the cup, from the plate. Here we, here we are. I don't make them too dark and of course they aren't grey, they aren't black because some amateurs, some beginners, they consider the shadows as the grey substance, which is not. So we wear grey colors in shadows as well as dark, I mean as well as black. Well, let's continue with the cup, just again using ochre, a bit of cadmium yellow, uh, cadmium yellow, and just put here a bit lighter lighter tones but not much because I need to keep it I need to keep it darkened because we've still got that wrapping which is not done yet and we need to understand that very soon this wrapping uh, must produce the nice effect of light and also the uh, that part of the cup which is which forms ellipses and which is at the opposite side of the the opposite edge to the front edge of the ellipses. Here we are. So just powerful and thick brush strokes might be very helpful. And as you see I switch I switch from one color to another without changing a brush. Just wipe the brush out using tissue. Uh, enhance some, some areas now, which I find important to enhance. Maybe get rid of some gray colors and enhance the saturation. Yeah, and now I pay a bit more attention to the drawing. 
and again switch to the background and the very free and nice scratching moves like that so don't don't be afraid of inaccuracy at the first stages of painting they're very important those free and inaccurate let's say improvisation but of course we need the discipline we need the nice drawing which is which is coming soon and again there is one more trick which is now I want to demonstrate look we've got two areas behind the cupboard behind the cup and one area is going to be darker one area is going to be lighter but in reality the right hand area is darker because it's placed further from the light source but on the painting I, I make the left hand area darker on purpose it will enhance the lighter lighter uh, side of the cup well since I get it darker this area turns to be lighter and again to enhance the contrast with the dark area of the cup I will lighten the background and darken the, the, the side of the cup a bit so now we've got those contrasts yeah well let's move on continue with this turquoise tone just low it so let's let's work with that then here we've got the source of light so don't be afraid to apply a low powerful low powerful the most powerful hues you can get from your palette like that like this because this area is closer the closest area to the source of light we've got just uh, lights coming from the left from the foreground and that's why this these things must be well lit and this uh, turquoise color interacts beautifully with those uh, scarlet hues on the background I don't know maybe I won't cover maybe I won't get rid of all those scarlet hues on the background maybe I will play with them I will get them work on my purpose here we are also let's get rid of some unnecessary lines which left from the previous tutorials here we are so we've got more elaborate coloring now you can feel the the light you can start feeling the light you can see the composition but the drawing is still weak now it's time to to change the brush and just change the flat flat white synthetic brush uh, to the uh, let's say thinner uh, bristle brush this bristle brush still allows me to get a lot of paint on its bristles and I can apply it again in a thick manner wherever I want here we are just now we pay more attention to the drawing to the accuracy to all those ellipses of course because it's a kind of alla prima painting I didn't didn't make any elaborate drawing beforehand I just started with paint covering on the canvas then I just make some amendments hoping for the best it's a, one of the strategies which artists apply in order to save time so you can try it but you need this boldness you need this 
bravery. And now we want to show I want to show the light, the powerful light, this wrapping. Let's have fun. So first I start with some pure cadmium yellow. I run out of it, but no worries. And then I reinforce it with uh, titanium white. Here we are. Now we've got very powerful light areas which attract our eye. That's our purpose. I'll just elaborate it more, just add some extra yellow make it looks like a real candy wrapping we use some pure colors tallow green tallow burnt umber to neutralize it to some extent then Here we are, and yeah, maybe some glitters with that. You see how it works, how it turns to be light and interesting. And When I need some reflections, I just boldly add them with plain with the wrapping. And I'm not afraid of making mistakes. That's the most important part of it. If I make a mistake, I just can easily mend it. So why do we have to afraid of to to be afraid of those mistakes? It's it's a natural thing for human being still the state of being afraid of making mistakes block us from a lot of interesting things in our life so here we are I just will stop with the candy for for a while just work further with the shadows In the next step, I'm going to enhance the uh, falling shadows under the cup of tea using the ultramarine. Some green tallow, maybe those deep shadows to make the painting more contrasted here we are then the cup I'm going on and work further on the drawing I just correct the ellipses I'll correct the form of the cup itself Here it is. And make some lightest areas, mixing cadmium yellow plus scarlet plus titanium white here. And the lightest areas are still 
not made of pure white as you see it's a complex mixture of at least three colors here we are the, the plate itself some reflections over there some darker areas we also need to to pay some attention to them right ultramarine plus burnt umber again in the shadows some a bit of scarlet here it makes those areas darker grayish but still colorful I'm using this scratching technique or applying the paint technique I will let the imprimatura to show up in some particular areas like here and here but again not much just to some extent well now we can enhance the internal ellipses on the T-surface can work on a kind of ornament but of course I don't pay too much attention to ornaments As you see scratching, some scratching and those scratching they revealing the feeling of ornament because the artist especially in a work like this where we have limited timing we don't have an opportunity to work on all those uh, ornaments in a more elaborate way and it's not necessary at all now let's say the handle of the cap is gonna be here just like that I start with darker with darker color, color. And then this darker color will turn, will turn to be uh, well lit. Some parts using cadmium again, scarlet plus titanium white. So here we've got it. But it shouldn't be lighter than the lightest area of the cup itself. If it's lighter, it will drag too much attention to it and therefore will turn to be the main object in the in the painting that object which drags the most of your attention is the therefore most important so don't allow the secondary thing the secondary objects not necessary object to be too important in your painting so always keep it in mind in order to to get this visual unity of the canvas of the painting so here we are just again I don't see the edge of the cup here and it, it's it's merge it merges with the, the plate maybe it's it's a nice thing let it let it work this way I won't do any changes for now right maybe the tea itself can be darkened a bit the areas closer to the center of the cup the areas closer to the shadowed areas like this The tea itself doesn't have the very strong edge. So we can just make it softener. And of course, 
has some light like that. Let's work on the plate again. Can make this ellipses more accurate, maybe some light areas we can darken a bit. As you see, I do not, I've got always this temptation to make it as light as possible, to use the pure white, but I still refrain of it because I understand if I make it too light, it will again, it will drag, drag the viewer's attention to it, to, it, to itself and it, it will ruin my, my whole my whole idea of the composition and that's why I don't do it all right there is a nice reflection from the cup from the cup here on the plate and it's very important this reflection from that that well lit area which makes this plate lighter here and if we show it it makes the beautiful irradiation in the whole picture as you see this nice and pleasant pinkish yellowish color here we've got some some blue Maybe. And of course the bottom line, which has a strong reflection, which has a strong reflection from turquoise napkin here. Here we've got it. We've got it. Maybe even stronger somewhere like that again get back to the lit areas on the on the plate you see a switch constantly switch from one area to another now we want to show this uh, kind of golden golden edge on the car uh, of the plate Cobble will be the next. Just show that the, this 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 is the border, kind of golden edge made of. Now it's made of burnt umber. So when you paint those nice areas, when you paint these areas covered with gold. You need to think about it and do not do not paint in a single color like yellow plus white. It would be a mistake. And then some yellows here and there and even some some nice turquoise dots and then we can reinforce it with kind of pure white but again mixed with ultramarine or turquoise a bit to make this warmth contrast Here we are. Can I use my store voice color? 
to help me with all those napkin color and the nice a nice uh, brown circle here which is gonna to which is gonna indicate the this golden ring it's of course it's not the same all around some way it's lighter some way it's darker Maybe some hints that this plate has got an ornament. Just hints, you don't need to, to paint them very accurately. And of course, the, the beautiful artwork is the artwork where you allow your viewer to to construct the things which you didn't tell literally but they are, they are there in the painting some prompts some again some hints that there is an object some hints that there is a golden stripe on the cup not literally but still exists still exists and I use some were very difficult colors, compounds made of two or three paints. And it's helpful. All right, the bottom. We need to show the bottom of the cup to some extent. Paint again a little bit attention to an accuracy of the drawing just make it symmetrical what I'm not doing I just try to to make all those colors and brush strokes singing in the one nice chorus I just want to verify that no one is dissonating. That's, that's the artist's task. Here we've got the cup, here we've got the candy. Now I just leave the cup, put the cup aside for a while. I mean, the working on it and just continue with the, with the background as well so just one and of course we'll leave this interesting scarlet background to some extent maybe here maybe at the top of the painting and this nice background makes us feeling kind of energetic and somewhere I will even enhance it using scarlet again rubbing the brush against the surface of the of the painting here it is again make sure that I don't have
that I don't have areas which I don't actually need. And here, just cover it with the paint. Now I need to look at my painting critically and I need to get rid of some very accurate, very strong edges. Uh, literally I need to soften the edges, especially that, that areas, which might not be very interesting. For example, look at this edge, it's very strong and it drags its attention, the viewer's attention to it, so we just can soften it like that and even the handle of the cup just a bit soften and then maybe the plate this area to some extent this well lit areas we don't need them too strong again here we are Maybe the cob, the cob itself also, I mean the, the edges, the side, the side edges of the cob can be also blurred. And it makes the front edges looks powerfully. Some glitters, the candy also can be kind of softened like this again I use flat synthetic brush for that purpose Again, I walk through the painting again and again in order to find things that I can improve now and soften now. Maybe this, nice things, I don't need too much of, of them, of that. You see, it gets better, it produces the real uh, light effect. Maybe I don't need too much of of it in those areas. Also we can play with a nice reflection all over the canvas in a random order. to make it more and I just want to get this area of the plate a bit wider I'm coming back and forth in order to see the whole painting to see what I have what I have achieved and what I can improve if necessary here we are. And of course there is a good time to stop and put a signature.
All right, guys, I hope this video was interesting and useful for you. So click the thumbs up, subscribe to our channel because the very interesting videos and uh, tutorials are coming. See you later. Bye.